So, how do I solve using the T formula? All right, I need to find the mean and the variance for each of my groups. And obviously I need to know the sample sizes for each of my groups. So I'm gonna make a table for both groups. I'm gonna find the mean and the variance, and then I'm gonna write my formula, and I'm gonna plug those numbers into my formula and solve for T. So let me show you an example, all right? Here I have two groups, right? My first group, group one, has six participants. So my sample size for group one is six, right? My second group has five participants. So my sample size for group two is five. I need to find the mean for each group, right? And then, once I find the mean, then I can find the sample size, I'm sorry, then I can find the variance. Then I can find the variance. So, next slide, let me show you, right? Here I have a table where I've already done that, right? Five plus four is nine, plus six is 15, 24, 31, plus eight is 39, 39 divided by six is six and a half. This is the mean. Five minus six and a half is negative one and a half. That's the difference. This is x minus x bar. This next column is the difference squared. So I'm going to take all of my differences, right? This is x minus x bar, the mean. This is the difference. This is the difference squared, right? Sometimes the difference is negative. Sometimes it's positive. But when I square them, they're all positive. All of this work is so I can find this. This is the sum of the differences squared, which is what I call the sum of the squares for short. What do I do with that? I take it and I divide it by my degrees of freedom, which is my sample size minus one. So I'm gonna take this answer, right, 17.5. I'm gonna divide it by six minus one. I'm gonna divide it by five. And when I do that, this is S squared. S squared equals 3.5. 17.5 divided by five, right? Five fits into 17 three times, right? Five fits into 2.5.5 times. There's my variance, 3.5. I do the same thing for the second group, right? I make a table to find the variance for the second group, right? I add up my scores. Five, 10, plus 11 is 21. 21 divided by five is 4.2. 3 minus 4.2 is negative 1.2. Negative 1.2 squared is 1.44. This is the difference. This is the difference squared. All of this work is to find the sum of the squares, the sum of the differences squared. I divide by my degrees of freedom, which is 5 minus 1. I divide this by 4. When I divide by 4, the answer is 3.7. So look, I have all the information that I need to plug into my formula, right? So, I write my formula. T equals a very long fraction, right? The numerator is the difference between the means, x bar one minus x bar, sorry, x bar two, right? All over a giant square root symbol that has two parts. The first part is n one, minus one times the variance of group one plus N two minus one, sorry, minus one, minus one times the variance of group two, right? This is gonna be divided by my total degrees of freedom, which is N one plus N two, my total sample size, minus two. Why minus two? Because there's two groups, right? The second fraction, it's real simple. It's n1 plus n2 all over n1 times n2. Right? That's a multiplication problem there. There's my formula. I just have to plug the numbers into my formula, right? So what is the sequel? T equals the mean of the first group, 6.5, minus the mean of the second group, 4.2, all over square root all over n1, 6 minus 1, that's 5, times the variance of the first group, 
3.5, right? Plus, remember, it's the pooled variance. Pooled means we're combining, we're adding, we're joining, right? Plus, the degrees of freedom from the second group, right? N2 minus one, so four, five minus one is four, times the variance of the second group, 3.7, right? This is gonna be divided by the total sample size, 11 minus two, this is nine, my degrees of freedom, and then over here, I'm going to multiply it by N1 plus N2, 6 plus 5 is 11, divided by 6 times 5, which is 30, all right? So, this is a decimal, I'm multiplying here, I'll put this in brackets, all right? Now remember your order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, we multiply before we add it. Right? Now here's what we mostly do. We usually like to solve this fraction before and then we solve this fraction, but that's gonna give us a lot of decimals. So what I recommend is once you find the answer to this numerator, just multiply across. And you'll have a lot less decimals to work with, and so you'll be less likely to make rounding mistakes. All right, let me show you my next slide. So again, found the mean and the variance for each group. I write my formula, that's what I have up here, here's my formula. I plug the numbers correctly into the formula, right? I multiply first, five times 3.5 is 17.5, four times 3.7 is 14.8. Hey, wait a minute, Jose, these numbers look familiar. Right here and right here. Where did I see those? Ah, they're right here. Remember, when you multiply your degrees of freedom, six minus one times your variance, what do you get? You get the sum of the squares. You get the sum of the squares. So, four times the variance gives me the sum of the squares. Right? So that's why these numbers look familiar. That's why I was showing you that earlier in the formula. All right, I've already multiplied, so now I add them. 17.5 plus 14.8 is 32.3 over nine. And this is 11 over 30. So I'm gonna come over to here now, right? I solved for my numerator a while ago, 6.5 minus 4.2, that's 2.3. Look, instead of solving this and then solving this and having two numbers with decimals, what did I do? I multiplied across. I multiplied across. So if you get your calculator, 11 times 32.3, that's 355.3, and nine times 30 is 270. Right? That's how I get this answer here. Now remember, your square root symbol does not disappear until after you only have one number underneath it, right? Part of my answer got cut off here. Right here I have one fraction, here I have one answer. Then in the next step, the square root symbol can finally disappear, and here is my OV, my obtained value. This is the answer to my statistical test. The answer to T is 2.005. Why am I rounding it to three decimal places? Because the textbook that I have to use to compare my answer against the table of critical values for the T distribution has three decimal places. So for this chapter, all of our answers need to be to three decimal places. If our answers need to be accurate to three decimal places, how many decimal places is the minimum of number of decimal places I need in my work? I need five. I always need two more than where I want to end up. If I want to end up at three, I 
need five decimal places whenever possible. All right? Okay.